so today we've got this um Every year, there is a big coffee trade show held here in the United States by the Specialty Coffee Association. It's called The Event. I, I always like to go because I want to see all the new products and see friends and industry people that we know and just hang out for a few days and just really be immersed in the coffee world. Well, last year, I happened to come across this guy. He had a real small booth, actually, and, and he had this coffee brewer. It was really kind of cute looking. And so he gave me a sample, and it's the... Akira Koki. It's kind of an odd name, I think. Well, only odd because I, I think when I think of Akira, I think of the anime movie. And this, of course, has nothing to do with it. And it turns out Akira Koki is a, is a company that started in 1977. They also make the halogen burners for the siphon vacuum pot type brewers. This is the box. It's kind of nice looking, you know, black with a, you know, nice artwork and photographs. Why the cone shape? So it's a cone shape, right? It's cone shaped glass. V-type filter paper can centralize the coffee grounds for a thicker wall to allow the water flow out in the center. It's perfect coffee extraction. S-P-E-R-F-E-C-T, spurfect. I don't know if that's supposed to be spherical perfect or, or what, that, that kind of clever, kind of clever. Um, it talks about here, layer of ground coffee, right? It is a dedicated filter. You know, I wonder if this is supposed to have... Oh, no, it, it, you can use paper filter, layer of ground coffee here. I remember when I saw it at the show, it was a very handsome, attractive-looking brewer. And so let's open it up and, and see what we have to say. And so the owner... What's this strawberry here at the bottom? Oh, at, the, at the top, very nice. And then, oh, champion cup. Okay, let's open this up. Oh, look at that. Not bad. So it's got this little insert that says Akira, Ka Akira Koki Champion Cup Strawberry Series. Now, how does that come out? Let's see. Okay, there we go. And then it says here, the advantages of Strawberry Series. Of course, the advantages are in Chinese. And so if you can speak read Chinese, then you'll be great. But if you're like me and you can't, it just looks cool. It's called the strawberry dripper because as you can see, there's this kind of strawberry-like dimpling to it. The dimples are actually little tiny points that are raised on the interior of the cone. And then this one has a really small orifice at the bottom of the cone. I think it's a really handsome, cute, quite attractive looking, and it's glass, which is something that, that's really, I think, unique in, in conical brewing because most everything is ceramic. And so let's open this up. Ah, there we are. Now the owner, when I met him, he was telling me that there's, he's giving this to me as a gift, but he's also, because it's, it's one thing to keep in mind, it's also missing a part, which is the rubber gasket. There's actually a rubber gasket that goes between this bamboo ring where the, uh, the brewer sits. But really, this is good enough. And since it was, you know, kind of given to me, we're certainly not complaining. I brought out a Hario V60 as a comparison. This is the Hario O2 V60. And as you can see, it's dramatically, whoops. From this perspective, it's much larger. I mean, the, uh, the strawberry dripper fits in as though it was a filter for the V60. So one of the things about the V60 that I, I really haven't really liked is the fact that it has this big hole, right? You've got this big hole that really allows any barista just to pour too hard. And there's no restriction and it can flow and flow and flow. And you can very easily under extract your coffee. There's no real restriction other than your personal skill as a barista and maybe the coffee grind size. So, you know, if, you're, if you grind your coffee really fine, of course, it's going to retard the, uh, the brewing. Otherwise, you have to really sit there and control your brewing very, very well. 
And that's one of the problems I've always had with this V60 because it allows people to cheat, essentially. And I, I've known sh of shops where they would brew the coffee in, in a minute, minute and a half. And um, basically, that's just not enough time for any extraction with a pour over. And you've got thin cups. And then some companies would compensate for that speed by overloading their V60. So instead of, let's say, 24 grams, they go to 48 just so they could hit a particular TDS number without really regard for how the coffee tastes. Well, I did want to bring this out just so we could have a comparison for size. Um, but the ridges here on the V60, they, um, you know, they serve the purpose of keeping the filter off of those side walls. So do too, do these dimples on the strawberry brewer. But on the strawberry brewer, the hole, sorry, I see Chang, has been in the way. The hole itself is really quite small. Especially compared to the V60. Right? I believe that this smaller hole, of course, will cause more. Let's get that, let's put this all into action and find out. We're gonna bring in our beaker, as well as a coaster. Ring goes on top of the beaker. And, and voila, just like that. Okay, I've got both the Melita number four filter. And then I also grabbed this Kova. I guess it's for V60 or Chemex, whatever you want, but that would, that could work. And to be honest with you, I don't really use metal filters, so we're not gonna use that today. We're just going to use the Melita number four, and we're gonna use my favorite hack for it. Seam to seam, and just fold it over. Seam to seam, just fold it, over, fold it over. It doesn't make a perfect cone, but it makes a cone enough, right? So just like that, fits in, oh, pretty much the whole way. Yes, see? Rinse the filter. We'll give it a nice solid rinse. All right, now dump the water out. So for today's brew, we're going to use this, the Cafe Excel Finca San Isidro natural process coffee from Honduras. This is a great coffee. It's a natural process, so a lot of really great berry and fruit forward tones to the coffee. Good body. You know, the acidity is kind of medium, not very high, not too, not too low, but really well balanced, really fruity, really delicious. And this is grown by a friend of mine, Katia Duque. She's located down in, in Copan Ruinas in western Honduras and so they've got all these like uh, Mayan temples and ruins it's beautiful it's an amazing place the farm is at 1500 meters and it's growing they're growing natural katuai and it's just a beautiful place to go and so this is a great coffee give that a try we've got that here good nose I've already pre-ground it good nose a lot of berries a lot of fruit forwards so now we're going to add our coffee so for this we're going to make you know, a 12 ounce serving, which is about 350 grams, uh, milliliters. Hence our beaker. And I'm using the beaker today because we want to see the glass. What better way to do it than use a beaker? Plus it's very scientific and we seem very intelligent that way. Okay, so we've got our hot water. Oh, so we're just gonna start by doing a light coating of the coffee with the water just to saturate everything and then we're going to let that slowly flow down put that there so you can see it so we let that happen for the first 30 seconds we're going to follow our standard protocols which is two grams for every finished ounce so if we're going for a twelve ounce cup which is about three hundred fifty milliliters we want to use 24 grams. So 12 times two grams is 24. So we're about a minute in. It's going fairly well. I mean, it's, it's, it's flowing relatively smoothly. You can see it here. I'm 
about a minute and a half. And we're just about 200 mils. Actually, also one of the nice things about using a beaker that's like this, it's graduated, is that I don't have to use a scale. We're at two minutes now. Ideally, we want to be finish our brewing right around the three minute 30 mark. I'm just going with a real straight circular pour. Nothing too crazy. You know, I could pulse it. It's really just up to you to do what you want to do. I believe that the important part is to have the right ratio of coffee to water, as well as the right amount of temp right, right amount of water temperature, as well as extraction time. Coming up on two minutes fifty seconds. And we are just about 300 grams, 300 mils. I am using a medium grind that we used on a Barazza Virtuoso. So we're right about 325. Add just a little bit more. We're pushing right up. Look, you can see we're pushing right up on 350. Okay, just a minute. That should do it. That should do it. Let's move that out of the way. So 350, 350 mils, and we're coming up on three minutes. Can you see that? Four minutes, just four minutes. Three. Ah, not bad. Okay, so now let us grab our china here. A little fanciness. Oh, and we're going to remove this. So let's look at the grinds. The grinds, you know, look pretty clean. They look pretty flat. They're nice and flat. Looks really well. Looks really good. I mean, that was that actually turned out great. I mean, all right, so we've got our brew here. Let's uh, let's see what it tastes like. I mean, we're definitely getting some of the uh, a lot of the blueberry notes, the berry, the cherries, maybe a little bit of plum. There's a little bit of bitterness that's coming through. I wonder if there's, um, I wonder if some of the fines might be a little bit extracted here. But it looks clean. We're gonna just take this now, rinse it. So that's pretty simple. You just need to, it rinses out, <laughs> rinses out pretty easily and Let's have more tasting with it. I mean, it's clean, crisp, really nicely brewed. What's there to say? I mean, it, it seems like a great, great little tiny brewer. And it's glass, which is... So, I mean, it's, it's elegant. It's elegant. It's pretty. It's attractive. It's, it's compact. I mean, because it is glass, you know, I, I don't know if I would use it as a traveling brewer. Like, would I want to take it with me and, and travel with it? I'd be a little bit concerned about doing that because glass. But I think it's really probably one of the most attractive brewers or conical you know home brewers on the market today and i'm quite glad that they get, he got that i got one of these thank you very much so yeah that's it so that's i guess that's it for today i mean the akira cookie champion cup strawberry brewer i'm going to put some links in the in the description below for where you can find them maybe we'll bring them in the spro at some point um, i do believe that my good friend john piquet at um, Cafe de Bola in Salt Lake City. He is an importer of Akira products, and so I imagine that he has the Akira Koki. I think he did a video about the uh, this same brewer where he does, he is planning to bring it in on stock. It comes with a gasket 
the rubber gasket so you don't have this kind of floating problem. And I do believe that his set comes with a, a glass carafe, so you don't have to use a beaker. Although if you really want to get a beaker, it's a great little thing to make people think you're very, very serious about what you're doing and you look really cool and really pro. I say go for it, Akira Koki, Strawberry Champion Cup Brewer, totally worth it. All right, until next time. Thank you.